global temperatures are rising, ice caps are melting rapidly, heat waves are becoming a common phenomena. We are witnessing extreme weather events or in other words, effects of global warming are far too evident. One technique that is now being touted as a solution for reducing global warming is called solar geoengineering. So in today's Climate Tracker, let's understand what this means. Recently, over 60 scientists across United States, Canada and Europe have warned that it is unlikely the world will remain below 2 degrees Celsius of heating beyond pre-industrial times. In such a scenario, they have called for methods like solar radiation management to be studied more deeply. So the question arises, can deflecting the rays of the sun help in cooling down the earth? Now, there are many artificial methods that can be used to limit global heating. But what is most likely to be considered is spraying of aerosol. These are particles such as sulfur into the atmosphere. Aerosols are minute particles capable of affecting the temperatures. Sulfate aerosols absorb no sunlight, but they reflect it. Thus, they reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth's surface. When they enter the clouds, they tend to increase the number of water droplets, but they reduce the size of it. This leads to more reflection of sunlight by clouds. This is similar to how volcanic aerosols lead to dimming of sunlight. However, these particles only survive in atmosphere for about three to five days. Thus, repeated spraying of aerosols would be required to make this method viable. United Nations Environment Program recently released a report on this as well. It calls for further study of geoengineering methods. However, it also lists the negative outcomes of this method, such as damage to the ozone layer, possible power imbalances and the conflicts that could lead between countries. In fact, it could also lead to risk of termination shock, whereby sudden stopping of spraying of particles could unleash burst up, pent up global heating. Taking all of this into account, over a hundred scientists have even called for solar geoengineering non-use agreement. Mexico has even banned the experiments of this technology. Of course, this method cannot be used as an alternative for cutting emissions, as it does not remove carbon from the atmosphere. But the important question is, can it act as a supplement in the fight against global warming? Now, for more on this, we are being joined by Laurie Oring from London. Laurie is a climate change editor at The Context. Welcome to the broadcast, Laurie. To begin with, how optimistic are you about solar geoengineering and do you think it is a solution f that the world needs right now? Well, I understand why people are, are interested in doing the research because we're, we're really not cutting the fossil fuel emissions that we need to cut fast enough. And that's risking things like some increasing uh, really high temperatures and heat waves that could be deadly for people, including in India. So you understand why there is concern about trying to find things that could help us avoid human deaths. But at the same time, I think this, this technology is something that uh, has a, a lot of people opposed to it, um, not least because it is, once research is done on, on a technology, it's often very hard to not use it. We've seen that through history a lot of times, you know, with the atomic bomb and other things of those kinds. Um, we don't really know exactly how deploying this would work, which is one of the reasons that we might 
that I need to research it. But but a lot of people say we're never going to reach agreement on using this because it is so controversial and because it impacts different countries differently. It could do things like shift monsoons potentially or rainfall in some parts of the world. We just don't know. And that is likely to create all sorts of political and geopolitical uh, conflict that could lead to other problems. And as well, this, um, this doesn't solve the problem of the oceans becoming more acidic and and you know gradually losing the life in them and it gives a green light to um, fossil fuel companies and politicians who may want to keep using fossil fuels because it's it's can be treated as a way to temporarily disguise the problem and so give a little more time for that Absolutely. And I was just going to come to that. As you rightly pointed out, this method cannot be used as an alternative for cutting emissions. But greenwashing is too common, especially by the largest emitters in the world like China and the United States. So I want to ask you, should we be concerned that something like geoengineering could become that? Yes, I mean, I think that is one of the big objections of people who object to this research is that it is can enable more delay in the kind of things that we really need to do to deal with this climate crisis, which is to cut out use of fossil fuels as swiftly as we can. Um, you know, anything that delays that further is, is creates problems. And, and the proponents of this technology will, will say, well, look, we're going to overshoot this 1.5 degree goal that we're, we're, we're you know, very keen to hold to. And this could be a temporary measure. We could use it for a little while until we get enough of the emissions cut to uh, to kind of gradually ease out of it. But we, we've seen that, that cutting emissions is so hard that it's possible that that won't happen and that we would need to continue carrying this on forever <laughs> um, until, you know, we, we find a way to get emissions down. Absolutely. Very interesting points made there. Thank you for all your insights, Laurie. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you. You're welcome.